Hello, everyone. So first of all, I would like to welcome everybody to this meetup session in Quantum Black. Uh, I would like to thank to the organizers uh, from QE Roundabout, as well as organizers here in Quantum Black. So, uh, so my name is Rupam Das. So I'm the I'm the head of uh, QA engineering here in Quantum Black. Uh, I'm, I'm having close to 20 years of experience into uh, software testing and quality assurance. Uh, have worked extensively with financial services, uh, government, and the pharma industry. My hobbies include traveling, uh, watching movies, and of course, cooking. So uh, yeah, so that's uh, something odd. <laughs> Moving on from there, so who we are. So as a company, Quantum Black, so we are a part of McKinsey. So uh, we are a part of uh, Global McKinsey uh, and Company Group. Uh, so we have been acquired by McKinsey uh, way back in 2015. Uh, so what we do is we exploit data analytics and design to help our clients to be the best they can be. So that means we just apply advanced analytics and advanced sort of data science into the problems which our clients come back to us and we sort of sort out all those problems for them. Uh, the first and foremost project, well, this is, this is one of the important projects which we did for Formula One. I mean, they are, they are, they are of course, a, a great client of ours. Uh, other than Formula One, we have done quite a lot of projects and also uh, many other pro projects are in the pipeline for quite a lot of uh, domains here as as you can see advanced industries infrastructure sport financial services telecom healthcare and uh, natural resources so as as you can see here there are there are a wide variety of domains here uh, last but not least yay we are hiring so <laughs> So if you if you if you guys want to uh, want to have a have a have a look at the uh, careers which we uh, sorry the the job uh, which which we have open at the at the moment I mean feel feel free to just log into this particular website there are quite a lot of opportunities out there uh, QB is, is is always looking for great talent and then uh, we are we are welcome uh, to uh, sort of welcome them. Uh, Thank you. Uh, now I will just pass pass it over to my colleague uh, Vikram and Nab. So they will just take over from there. All right. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Rupam. Hi, everyone. Uh, can everyone hear me this way, or do I need to use a mic? On the back. All right. Fantastic. All right. So um, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mohammed Nabawi. Uh, please feel free to call me Nab, that's my short name. Uh, I've been in the testing industry for uh, around six years. Uh, for now, I've been uh, previously working in the automotive industry in companies like Value and uh, Ultram. And I've recently moved to the data science industry to try to uh, discover the, the, that undiscovered path in, in QA. Uh, I love traveling so much, playing squash. Anybody here play squash? Fantastic, very good. Awesome. <laughs> and a lot of cooking as well. And here's a picture of me on the, on the right. I don't know who is that guy. <laughs> really, he keeps popping up and taking pictures with me. <laughs> and uh... Hi guys, uh, I'm Vikram. Uh, 15, uh, more than 15 years of experience in uh, software integration and testing and uh, in different domains. Uh, I work for Sky for uh, a number of years uh, in the set-top box domain. Uh, then uh, uh, testing in uh, infrastructure, testing the infrastructure as code. Uh, in the DevOps, uh, testing in DevOps. Um, currently, I'm exploring uh, testing in data science. Uh, I'm quite passionate about um, uh, software security, and uh, uh, in the spare time, I spend uh, time in, uh, in uh, exploring uh, DevSecOps. Uh, yeah, that's for me. Uh, now, we'll uh, continue with the slides. All right. Uh, so, we're having the presentation between the two of us. Uh, I'm uh, be talking about the first part. Uh, so the presentation today is about testing in data science and data analytics projects, all right? Uh, so here's the agenda. Today we're going to talk about briefly what is, data, what is a data science project. And then we're going to talk about the uh, data science project pipeline, what are the different uh, uh, things we do in a data science project, and how a QA can be involved in the data science projects. Uh, and then we're going to explore some uh, uh, testing libraries that we can involve in these kinds of projects and how can they help us to, to, to proceed with the quality. All right, so 
That's Benjamin Franklin telling us that the bitterness of poor quality remains long after the sweetness of low price. That's a reminder for myself and everyone that investing in quality is a key, that without the quality you're going to enjoy a low price, but at the end you're going to lose. So let's all remember that. OK, so what is data science? Can anybody answer me? Anybody uh, work in data science projects before? Collecting statistics. Sorry? Collecting some statistics and analyze the statistics to predict the future. Fantastic. That's one way to say it. Any other one? Scientific approach to analyzing data. Fantastic. Very good. <laughs> All right. Can, can you use the mic? Oh, OK. Sorry. I need to use the mic, guys. So. <laughs> OK, so uh, data science. So data science is an interdisciplinary field. Uh, they use scientific methods, processes, and algorithms to find insights in the data or to build predictive models, uh, machine learning models, to uh, uh, basically predict the future. So as an example, a uh, very simple example is the uh, house uh, prices. So uh, you can build a machine learning model that uses the previous data of house pricing to predict the, the house price of a new house. All right. So that's briefly a data science in a very small nutshell. OK. So the data science project pipeline, how does we come up with a data science project? What is the different stages in a data science project? So first of all is data collection. So data collection here uh, is referring to the point where you go to the client or crawl the websites or look for data somewhere and collect all these data. And uh, this is raw data. So uh, they can be messy, they contain a lot of mistakes, uh, they don't have to be in the same format that you're expecting them to be, uh, and they will need a lot of cleaning. So what you do is that you do a data preparation step where you make sure that the data is, uh, you, you clean all the data, you, you get rid of all the null values, for example. Uh, you make sure the, da the date format is correct uh, in that specific column, and so on. And after that, something called feature engineering, and that's the fun part. So before explaining this, let's say what's the feature actually? Okay, so going back to that example of the house prices, so if I Tell any one of you, how do you actually put a price on a house? What do you look for? You assess the house. Fantastic. How? Uh, the quality of the house, the state is in, how big, where it's located. Fantastic. Very good. So every one of, of, of these kind of characteristics, let's imagine they're a column. Yeah? So we say that the location of the house, the be number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, and the list goes on, right? And at the end of the day, you have a price. So each one of these columns we call a feature, yeah? In that example, it's very, it's very simple to find features. These are straightforward features. But in many other examples and a lot of applications, you, you're going to find that the uh, data comes uh, and you need to prepare some features or you need to engineer some features. So what you do is that you use this data, do some analysis, a bit more analysis, or you combine some of the data, or you extract some of the data, you get rid of some of the data, and you end up with a feature that you're going to use in your uh, data science project. Uh, and all of these steps so far is a crucial step for the success of your project. If you get these wrong, you're probably going to get a very wrong predictive model, and you're going to actually spend a lot of time trying to figure out what's wrong with it. OK, machine learning. So machine learning is uh, uh, using the data that you've already prepared and the features that you've engineered to uh, ask the machine to learn. And uh, you use that model that you created from the machine learning step to predict something new. So again, with the house prices, you have the machine learning model with all the data of the houses. And then you build that model. It comes up with, with a predictive model. And then you supply it a new, f a new set of features for a house. And you ask the model to give you a price back. Yeah. Then visualization. So the reason visualization is option here is that because uh, um, it, it means that you can have a visual uh, layer or a presentation layer on top of that, but that's not always the case. Uh, sometimes you end up by the machine learning or, uh, uh, or uh, getting insights and then present it to the client, but some other times you build an actual machine learning algorithm, like the recommendation system in Amazon, for example, or the uh, Zoopla house pricing machine learning, all of these sets on top of the machine learning. OK, so now we've looked at the project pipeline. Starting with the data preparation, what do you think, guys? What kind of QA we can do here? What kind of testing we can do in the data preparation? Making sure the data is in the format that we 
Right. Fantastic. That's a very good point. What else? Completeness. Completeness. Very good. Remove Any other points? Sorry? Data. Fantastic. So making sure that the data doesn't have any knowledge, for example, or okay. Very good. Anything else? Okay, I think we've covered most of it. Uh, so unit tests both data properties and code. So what we have said here is the data properties. But also we use some code to prepare this data, right? We use some code to, uh, that has a regular expression, for example, to make sure that a column has exact set of data. So we need to test that code. We need to make sure that this code actually is removing the data that I want to remove and keeping the data that I want to, to keep. Okay, the next one. Oh, I should have asked first, damn it. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, since I've already, uh, it's all gone, ah. Uh, Okay, so feature engineering is going to be pretty much the same. But on top of that, we're having pipeline validation. And what I mean by pipeline is that sometimes when you do the feature engineering, you have more than one function building the feature for you. And these functions kind of talk to each other, or uh, uh, each one is outing a data that's going to be used by the other function. So that integration between these functions should be tested as well. Okay, well, machine learning, that's the most interesting part in terms of testing. So what do you guys think? Keeping in mind that the machine learning algorithm or a machine learning application is always kind of uh, uh, undeterministic. You cannot always rely on giving the same data and getting the same output, right? So what do you guys have in mind? Test it for like a range of probabilities that it should come up with. You, you can't, you're not going to get a definite like 100%. You, you're going to have an idea of, you know, its confidence values shouldn't deviate from the reasonably expected range for a given input. Yes, uh, plus one that. Any other ideas? Could you remove part of your data and see that it predicts the data that you removed? What do you mean part of your data? You mean part of the training data you give in the model? Um, I would say that's part of developing the model, really. And uh, that, so, so when, you, when you build the model, you have the, the training data and the validation data. Uh, so, so removing some of the training data, I think it, it, it usually won't help the model to predict better. You cannot predict the output of the machine learning. Yeah. But whatever received that machine learning data has to ans has to process it in ways we can predict. So you can test for that. Okay. Uh, so so you mean that uh, whatever comes before the machine learning can be no, tested? After. I mean, we cannot predict what the machine is going to say, but we are going to do something what they say, and that. I mean, the process we are going to do with that data is a process we already know. So we can test that the process works, and if it doesn't work, it's because that interface between what the machine, what the machine gives and we process, there's a failure in there. OK, yeah, that could be. OK. All right. Uh, so I think, I think most of, of what you guys said is, is uh, quite correct. Uh, so we do algorithm validation on the basis of making sure that it gives us a range. But on top of that as well, uh, you make sure that it's, 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 it, the algorithm is sane. It doesn't give you some crazy result. So for example, I was doing an insurance code this morning and I came up with a list of insurers giving me very reasonable price. And one gave me 87,000 pounds worth of insurance for one year on my car. That doesn't sound right, right? So we need to make sure that the algorithm uh, gives us kind of legitimate results. So you can have for the uh, house price, you can have all the features of the house the same for two houses, one in a very posh area and one in a uh, normal area, and you give it the same price. That would be uh, very wrong, I would say. Uh, and when I say bias check here, it means that making sure that the algorithm is not biased towards, uh, 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 for example, an ethnic, my, uh, ethnic group or, or, or sex or something like that. And the performance of the machine learning algorithm. Uh, uh, so, so that's very important, especially in something like fraud detection. So when you do fraud detection, you're going to need to make sure that you have a, a time frame where the, the algorithm should alert you that there's a fraud transaction going on. And then w after that time, you really can't use the data. You, you can't use the, the prediction. So it's very important to make sure that you take the performance into, into consideration. Uh, visualization could add a top, on, top of the, on top of the machine learning a bit of uh, performance bottlenecks as well. So you need to revisit your performance testing when you, when you have some visualization. 
Uh, all right. Um, OK, so that's us. Very cute and adorable. How are we going to be involved in the uh, data science projects? OK, so I think we should be really uh, involved in creating, maintaining, and running the following. The algorithm validation we've just spoken about with the machine learning algorithms. The system validation, which goes all the way from the uh, visualization and, uh, until the, uh, getting a, a, a prediction or uh, getting uh, an insight. The performance, as we mentioned, for the machine learning and including the visualization. And uh, building a, a continuous integration uh, 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 script or, or circuit CI, configuration YAML or whatever, to make sure that the that, that unit tests uh, generated by uh, whoever wrote the data preparation steps and the feature engineering steps like data engineers or data scientists are included in a continuous integration pipeline. Uh, and we also need to make sure that the testing activities took place. So we need to make sure that the tests are written for, for the different, uh, uh, for, for the data engineering, sorry, for the data preparation and the feature engineering. And we need to make sure that the peer reviews and other static checks took place. That's a very important step as well. And the most interesting part is going out there, attending these meetups, looking for new uh, testing methodologies, uh, looking for new testing tools that we can apply to the data science projects. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about four testing libraries today. Uh, the first is test-driven data analysis uh, and Engardi, which is going to uh, be uh, uh, presented by Vikram. And then Hypothesis and Feature Forge, uh, which is going to be the last two tools. So uh, giving it over to Vikram. Thank you. Thank you, Nab. OK. Where are we? OK. Uh, this is uh, uh, when I started uh, my um, uh, work at you know, Quantum Black. Uh, well, when I knew, uh, and I was new into data science, uh, trying to understand what a pipeline is. I was thinking it was a CI CD pipeline they're talking about. <laughs> but a uh, data scientist corrected me that it's a data pipeline. So there, there are a lot of variations in terminologies that we work with here. Uh, so what's a data science pipeline? Um, so uh, as NAB uh, went through the project pipeline, this is specifically for the data pipeline. So uh, in the data pi pipeline, we first have the uh, input data for, that we collect from the clients, and then uh, start with different uh, phases in the pipeline. So first phase is the wrangling phase, where, where uh, the data is, uh, uh, which is available in different formats, uh, that's converted to the right format, uh, which is uh, which uh, can be processed. And uh, so for example, uh, it can be in a text format or uh, some random format that can be converted into a database table or a CSV or a Pandas data frame. Uh, so th this is the first phase. And then we uh, start with the cleaning phase, where uh, we filter the data. Uh, for example, if the, 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 uh, the data set has a lot of null values, you need to correct it, or any errors in the, in the data. Uh, then uh, we start with uh, the next three phases of uh, the pipeline, which are iterative. Uh, start with exploratory analysis uh, in order to model that data. Exploratory analysis is where we try to make sense of the data that we have got, understand the data and then try to model it. So uh, we, the, the, the data scientists start doing this, but at uh, one point they realize that still uh, it doesn't make sense, then it just goes to the pre-processing uh, phase. Uh, so it, it's an iterative process, and then once uh, we achieve a satisfactory model, then we move to the next phase, which is the um, model val validation. And then, um, finally, the presentation, as uh, Nab mentioned, it's, it's the visualization. Where it's a kind of a storytelling. Where we have got everything, the model developed, then we need to present to the client. So there, this is where the presentation comes into picture. And then we get the final output. It can be in terms of uh, data sets or graphs or uh, uh, whatever the client is expecting. Uh, this, this, these are different phases of the uh, the uh, data science pipeline. And you can see there are different uh, in, in intermediary outputs uh, which we are uh, capturing. Uh, these will be in the form of da data sets or graphs, uh, and we get the final output. So if we think about uh, testing this uh, pipeline, 
uh, we have uh, uh, two aspects of testing. One, testing the code in the pipeline and testing the integrity of the data that's being processed. So uh, testing the code, um, uh, mostly we are talking about the Python landscape here. In the data scientists use mostly the Python and R. And uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, talk is mostly uh, focused on the Python landscape. So we, uh, for testing the code, we use uh, 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 PyTest or unit test, or for integration test, we use Behave uh, for doing the um, uh, unit integration testing. And for the uh, testing the integrity of the data, and there are a few uh, packages that are available in Python. Uh, that's the focus of the uh, next few slides. Uh, so, so one is uh, TDDA, Test Driven Data Analysis, uh, which is quite promising package. Uh, and the uh, other one is NGAR, which is a, a lightweight uh, uh, testing package. So, so uh, test driven data analysis. Uh, test driven data analysis is uh, based on uh, the uh, idea of uh, test driven development, which uh, I think uh, most of us are aware of. Uh, in the typical software engineering application, uh, in the TDD, uh, we start with writing the test and then try to uh, develop the feature. Initially, the tests are failing, then you complete uh, the feature to make the test pass. So, th this is how we drive the, uh, test, uh, the feature development. Uh, the same idea is used here, uh, and uh, it's based on concept of uh, the reproducible research. Uh, what it, this means in simple terms is, uh, if you have a given input and uh, if you pass that uh, uh, the data um, in a, in a, in, a, in a same script, and you get a, you should get the same output. So. Uh, it's a concept that is used in data science, and uh, uh, this package supports that, which which actually ha helps to understand that uh, this package can be used al aligned with the data science uh, testing. Uh, and this is uh, basically doing uh, uh, ETL testing, the the extracting the data, the transforming and uh, uh, load testing. Uh, so how how do we test? Uh, start with the test here. So in, in the data, uh, data sets that we get, um, the, the, the metadata or the data properties, uh, there are a lot of constraints. So we act on, we consider these con constraints as the unit units of the uh, data and uh, write test using the TDDA package, which is based on unit test and PI test, test frameworks. So we have a tool set and we have a TDDA approach. So uh, to just summarize, uh, TDDA is a methodology which uh, also provides a tool set uh, in the form of uh, unit test or PI test fr test framework to do uh, uh, the testing. So, uh, th what are the modules uh, that uh, th uh, this uh, TDDA provides? Uh, uh, it's uh, constraint discovery and verification is one of the modules and uh, a reference test. So uh, let's go through uh, each of these modules. Uh, reference test, uh, you can think uh, reference test uh, as a system test for testing the data. So uh, these are the APIs uh, that we have. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, the, uh, for example, the first one, assert CSV file correct, you are comparing the uh, couple of uh, data sets, uh, reference uh, CSV with uh, a generated uh, CSV. So you're comparing two data sets. One is uh, one you are using as a reference and one that is being generated. So you, you, there are different uh, uh, APIs available for uh, different types of data sets. For the Pandas data frame, you have a different API. So looking at the, the pipeline that we looked in the previous uh, slide, uh, there are uh, intermediate outputs um, at each, uh, each uh, phase of the uh, data pipeline. And uh, uh, we, we are uh, uh, at every uh, 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 step, uh, we, we can uh, use these APIs uh, to uh, test the data that is uh, flowing through the, uh, the pipeline. Uh, we can build on the test, and the next step would be to have these tests created and then uh, run it uh, in, a, in a CI, a continuous integration server. 
So uh, if there are any regressions, uh, that can be uh, easily picked up. Uh, for, for example, uh, let's take a typical use case where uh, the uh, uh, data scientist uh, takes the uh, input data, uh, goes to the pipeline, uh, finally develops the model, and then uh, it's, uh, completes uh, the model and gets the desired output. So after maybe after a while or, or one or two weeks, uh, if you, you pass the same data, uh, but you get a different output. Uh, it, a lot of things might have gone wrong there. Uh, it may be some uh, library updates in the pipeline or uh, some OS updates or uh, something uh, regression caused by some of the code changes. So uh, during this process, uh, we are uh, in the first phase when you have got the right output, you would have captured all the uh, reference uh, uh, outputs, which you can use as reference. And then uh, every time you compare uh, using these APIs and uh, the test framework, you can uh, 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 test the data if there's any regression uh, through the pipeline. The other module is uh, cons constraint discovery and verification. Uh, this you can uh, uh, look at it as a unit test, to, uh, which, which is provided by a few uh, APIs, uh, uh, discover, uh, verify, and detect. So uh, let, let me take an example to explain this. Uh, so suppose we have an input data set, which is in the form of a CSV. Uh, then you, what you can do is you can apply the, uh, the API discover uh, to identify the constraints in the data set. And you uh, come out with uh, a JSON uh, format file, uh, which uh, has all the constraints uh, in that particular data set. So you're capturing this uh, uh, constraints and then in then uh, in subsequently when you uh, have new data sets coming uh, when the client releases new data and you want to uh, 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 test for the data then what you can do is you can uh, use the verify or the detect uh, api to uh, apply the json file the constraints file on top of this data set and find if there are any issues with the uh, the data, uh, if, if there are any issues that can be highlighted uh, by, the, by these uh, APIs. So yeah, the, 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 this is uh, about the TDDA. And uh, the, the next package that is uh, uh, quite promising is a, a lightweight uh, package, which is NCARD. Uh, this is based on uh, defensive data analysis. Uh, and de defensive data analysis in, in the, is a, a, a term terminology that is used where uh, uh, if where uh, which is used to minimize the risk involved um, when uh, you, uh, involved because of the uh, integrity issues in the data. So uh, this is uh, typically useful for uh, uh, Panda data, uh, data frames uh, testing. Uh, uh, the, the good part of it is it uh, makes uh, use of the uh, Python uh, decorators. So uh, it doesn't uh, the test that we write doesn't interfere with uh, the actual code. Uh, it's run in a, it can be run a, a separately. Uh, so these are some of the examples of uh, the APIs that are used there. Uh, where uh, you can uh, uh, call the API, uh, uh, pass on the uh, couple of data frames, and assert if they are different or if they are equal. Uh, then uh, you can uh, uh, use a verify API, where uh, uh, you can pass the data frame and uh, check for the rows or columns if there are uh, any uh, discrepancies there. Um, then uh, assert that there are no missing values in a given data frame. Uh, just going to just an example uh, to make it uh, more clear uh, if you see uh, there is a function uh, function which is taking uh, two data frames and uh, uh, adding uh, the data set data frame uh, the, that's the output of it and uh, it, uh, the decorative there none missing is actually was saying that uh, in the output data set uh, check that the, there are uh, no uh, missing values uh, so you can keep on adding the decorators uh, as uh, uh, or assumptions that you make 
uh, for each of the functions and uh, uh, add it as decor it is. And the next uh, example is uh, where it's checking for the, uh, the CSV file, uh, whether it has uh, 1290 rows and 10 columns and it has, whether it has uh, unique indices. Uh, that, that's uh, the output. Uh, it, it, so it, it's a it's, it's a lightweight uh, uh, package uh, that can be uh, quite handy uh, while testing the data integrity. So next one is uh, hypothesis. So I will uh, let uh, Nab continue with this. Thank you. Thanks, Vikram. All, <coughs> all right, guys. Uh, <coughs> so, have you ever heard about property-based testing before? Yep. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Um, explain this. Is that is that in base of the is that based not in the results of the plan or what are the property of things? It's like I mean the example was testing the testing addition, no that's testing this plus this is this number. Yeah. Or like the properties of addition, like the order of the factors don't alter the results, uh, or the properties that the addition operation has. Yeah, very good. Uh, yeah, that, that's quite correct. So, so that, that's the, the definition of property-based testing when it uh, first, first came into the market. The hypothesis is trying to define something kind of around the property-based testing, but in a, in a different format. So let's imagine that this is the function that we're trying to test, yeah? And these are our test cases, the darts are our test cases. So do you think that these test cases are enough to make sure that the board is functioning correctly for all the different areas of it? Or maybe if I throw a dart here, it will fall because it's made from a different material, for example. Yeah? So what, what the hypothesis is trying to do for you is to make sure that it covers the different input uh, domain for you, but without asking you to type all the test uh, data. You just type the test case, yeah? the test logic, and it, lets, and, and it works out all the different test cases for you, or all the different uh, edge cases, all the different kind of uh, um, uh, corner cases, and so on. So it's very, very uh, helpful when it comes to focusing on the test logic itself rather than the test data. You let it define all the test data for you. And it also allows you to define some test strategies. So for example, let's say that I'm trying to prepare a different function which also only have this area. Uh, th this domain, this input domain, and I don't care about the rest. So you can define a search strategy that only takes a specific uh, uh, input, uh, uh, input domain. For example, you can say that I want all my input, uh, my, all my text input to be of alphabets. I don't want any Chinese characters, for example. Something like that. And the most important part is that it works with pandas and numpy. And pandas and numpy are an essential uh, Python packages for data analysis and data, uh, uh, and data science. And it seamlessly integrates with PyTest as well. So let's go and check a quick kind of example on how that's run. So can you guys see that? All right, so that's a function that takes a data frame. And the data frame is just a table, just like Excel. Yeah, It has like rows and columns. So it takes a data frame as data, and it takes a column name. Yeah? And what it's trying to do is to, it's trying to remove all the spaces from each of the cells in the data frame. So as you can see, I'm using uh, a, a function called replace. And uh, sorry, uh, I'm using first this function, which is a strip function. So the strip function removes the spaces on the left and the right of, of, the, of, of any string. But it will leave the spaces in between. Yeah? But I don't know that yet. So I'm going to write my test function in here. Yeah, so the test function, pretty simple. It just calls the remove spaces and it sends the data frame and the column name. Okay, here's the interesting part. This decorator here, a given, is belongs to the hypothesis framework. So it lets you to define your input space and the search strategy. So you say that I want a data frame, yeah, with a column called string and of type string, and I want my rows to be of uh, type text and all and, and the search strategy I'm looking for is that to contain from the alphabets all these letters or combination of letters like Mr. Dot for example. And the maximum size of the row should be one because I only have one column. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and run this test. Okay. 
So failed. All right, interesting. That's what supposed to do, that's it, uh, the demo, yeah? <laughs> so you have here a falsifying example. You have a row zero, you have zero, space, zero. So that didn't work, and that's because we're having a strip function here, so it removes the spaces on the left and the right, but it doesn't remove the spaces in the between. So we're gonna use the replace function, which does uh, remove all the spaces in, the, in, in any string, and we're gonna run it again. And this time, we're supposedly getting a pass, Fantastic, all right. By doing that, you haven't seen the power of hypothesis yet. So let's see all the different outputs, sorry, all the different input data that hypothesis gives you. Okay, so here you go. These are all the test data that hypothesis tried to generate for you. Probably, if you spend ages trying to figure out what test data and corner scenarios and, and edge cases to try to come up with, you won't do it as easy as this. So as you can see, different characters, none even Unicode characters, other characters, spaces in different locations, empty strings, only spaces strings, all of these test input uh, or test data is generated for you automatically, uh, which is quite great, of course. Okay, so coming back to that. Uh, so that's hypothesis. So the second one is uh, called Feature Forge, and this is related more to the uh, uh, feature engineering step. Uh, it's a very lightweight package. It tries to uh, put itself in the market. That it's, uh, uh, it's a tool that they use to test feature engineering code. Uh, so it uses uh, um, uh, decorators as well. Uh, so you can define an input schema as an output schema. And in that particular example, we're trying to detect spam, uh, spam emails. So the input schema is uh, of JSON, body, and some uh, characters. And the output schema of this a particular feature is the length of the body. So the length of the body contributes to uh, detecting if the email is a spam or not. Uh, so on the left is your code, on the right here is the test code. So with the test code, you, uh, you, you just build it a class in Python and you give it a name. Uh, so, sorry, you, you give the feature name, which is the body length, the function name here. And then the fixtures is your test cases. So you can test equality, so you can make sure that the body has five characters when it actually has five characters. And you can make sure that a, a, uh, of approx approximate values as well. So you can make sure that a body can be approximately of six characters. And you can make sure that uh, your value getting from your feature is within a, a specific uh, 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 kind of uh, non-continuous range, like 137. You want to make sure that your uh, uh, feature code gives you one of these values. And also you can do some negative testing, making sure that if you send some, uh, an empty JSON, it will raise a value error. Uh, so that concludes the four uh, uh, testing tools that we want to uh, uh, introduce today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation.